Hi all, let's look at one of the French defence encounters between Alpha Zero playing white and Stockfish playing black. So the French defence was one of the openings that Alpha Zero kind of discarded in about an hour of its key four hours of uh, intensive learning, self-learning. So playing white, we get a French defence by transposition after d4 e6. Knight c3, knight f6, we end up in a French defence now. And Alpha Zero goes for the classical variation, which is just simply e5. There are other popular moves here, like bishop g5, but e5 is the classical used by the likes of Steinitz, the first world chess champion. So Alpha Zero approving Steinitz variation. So c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e3. Quite often, players with black play c takes d4 here. I think this is one of the most popular continuations to play like this, with the knights holding the bishop, so there's no tactic here to win a piece. And it's pretty standard position. But here we see another popular move, but maybe not as popular. It's a little bit, perhaps you can argue, a bit more passive. Bishop e7. It keeps this central tension. Queen d2, a6. And now quite a rare bird move, actually. Bishop d3 is played here. Very, very interesting. And in fact, black played c4. And this is often uh, a typical, well, uh, it used to be an old computer mistake to release the tension in the center. But here perhaps it's more justified because the position is pretty closed in nature. Uh, black could have considered, say c takes d4, this position is going to be okay for white. For example like this, this would be uh, heading potentially into a knight versus bishop endgame which often favours white for example. White would have a small edge there. That's not all forced of course. But this is quite intriguing, this tension uh, releasing move c4. Bishop e2, b5 a3 to try and slow down black's queenside expansion rook b8 both sides castle and now the thematic break f5 to try and challenge this pawn structure at the exploitable base of the chain which is e6 now black cannot really do e takes f5 without suffering to knight takes d5 this position is quite good for white it will be a small edge here you can see the mobile pawns are going to be quite dangerous later so after f5, this is ignored with a5, just getting on with queenside expansion. f takes, leaves a target on e6, and we'll see now that after this nifty move, bishop d1, e2 is vacated, so we have this potential kind of thematic knight maneuver to hit e6. b4, a takes, a takes, that opens up that rook, activates the rook. Now knight e2, so going into f4 seems pretty thematic. Now black does quite an ingenious looking pawn sack. For, for potentially strong counterplay. This is actually taken, and now the idea is not to take here, but to play knight b6 with the menacing knight c4, which seems very, very comfortable for black. If b takes c3, this really isn't the point, because white would just be better here. And yeah, just, just clearly better there. So knight b6 is the interesting point to go into c4, temporary pawn sack. Queen e1, knight c4, hitting the bishop on e3. Now that retreats. B takes c3, queen takes, queen b6. King gets out of the way. There could have been some trouble on that diagonal with knight takes e5, for example. So unpinning the d-pawn, quite a useful move quite often. Knight b2, now knight f4, so getting on with putting pressure on e6 finally. Knight takes, rook takes. Bishop d7, h4, rook a8, bishop d2, rook fb8. So it seems interesting for both sides at this moment. White's gaining a bit more space now with h5. Rook takes, so a pair of rooks coming off. And now the queen's come off. c3, reinforcing the center, rook b3. Check. Now here, white doesn't seem to have a very easy infiltration point on the queen side. It seems to be all guarded for the moment. 
and now some space gaining on the king side so g4 black wants the rooks coming off but white is refusing and now some shuffling around here infiltration again repulsion again rook comes back king comes up and this is a bit of a concession now h6 giving that g6 square a little bit of a conce uh, concession uh, so maybe concerned about g5 and what comes next after that so white seizes that g6 square immediately this could be very handy for snapping on the sp off this bishop to weaken black on the dark squares rook a3 we have an infiltration again bishop d7 this time g5 so white is offering basically uh sometimes it seems c3 is going to drop off here or is it just a pawn sack but white always has the option of knight takes e7 so let's see in fact there's another option now sort of me even immediately taking which is used can you see if i give you five seconds white's play in this position so you can see that there's a potential issue with c3 if white takes on g5 so king g4 king gets more aggressive bishop d8 hitting the rook rook comes back bishop c8 now knight takes g5 under safe circumstances and you'll note the king's off this dangerous line so there's no pin on that c3 pawn so the king's pretty safe there well not not allowing tactics rook a1 knight comes, goes back defends g1 there rook a3 bishop e1 giving some options like bishop h4 sometimes bishop a5 and now rook f2 actually letting this pawn go but it's very very dangerous i believe for black to take it black played rook a1 if bishop takes c3 here bishop takes rook takes then actually a key move would seem to be in this position this one you might think that's a bit weird knight on the rim is dim actually in this case it's quite important to guard f5 so for example knight takes d4 check we can win this pawn and you'll note that f5 it's useful to have the knight on the rim it's not so dim and if we have this continuation it's going to be better for white white has a big positional advantage uh there so let's go back so black didn't take on c3 here bypass that in fact with rook a1 bishop d8 rook h2 pushing for h6 now where is this all leading bishop g5 so not taking the knight and letting the knight be taken in fact black refuses that knight f5 we have a bishops coming off rook b2 rook c1 and now knight g h4 just challenging this nice blockading piece again at the cost of c3 potentially black uh took on h4 knight takes h4 and again did not dare to take on c3 so what's up with this now well there's rook f2 this is strong because g7 is the issue if g7 drops then we've got a fast running h pawn for example like this that will be checkmate and if the king goes over there then we have rook f7 and we can have a very dangerous pawn coming up that will be winning for white so okay again this had to be just ignored this c3 pawn okay let's get back to that position so knight g h4 just ignoring that c3 pawn after the, after the knight takes h4 that c pawn was just left instead bishop d7 rook b8 check now knight g2 offering c3 again it's finally taken it but we have an ideal knight now on f4 so this is why it's basically a, a strategic intention of this often against the French defense is to try and get an ending where the knight's better than the bad bishop in inverted commas of the French defense and here it would seem to be the case that the bishop is pretty passive locked down by its own pawn chain so king d7 king f3 check some shuffling here knight g6 we have rook a1 the, the rook is deciding perhaps to use the f file now rook c7 king h3 guarding the f file king comes up on that side now again 
where is this all leading? This maneuvering infiltration here. Uh, potentially, there's a, you have to look out for things, but here at the moment it's pretty safe tactically at the moment for black. Knight d3 though. Now this spells big issues. This knight c5 coming up. Rook a6, bishop c8, check. Rook d6, keeping the pressure on e6. That knight c5 looks like a nasty thing coming up. And in fact, here, black's kind of strangulated, having to defend e6. And basically, a simple plan, a fairly simple plan, uh, would be to march the king up and maybe at some point rook d8 to g8. So black, in desperation here at move 73, it seems, played g6. I'll just show you an example if black didn't play g6, how white could progress, could bring the king up and sort of zugzwang black to allow rook d8, because otherwise there's king f7, the rook has to guard f7. So we sort of zugzwang. Once that's, that door is opened, then that's used and just to win g7, and after that the h-pawn will be winning. So that's a winning plan. So this helps explain, perhaps, Black wasn't too happy about this position for g6 to, to be played. So h6, knight takes e6. Now with this, d5 is of course weaker. So that was a good trade-off to trade one pawn for basically potentially two here, this dropping off now, this center pawn. So we've got pawn mobility now. And Black's position is crumbling basically. Those center pawns are going to be really strong for white and now that pawn drops as well it's pretty much all over here it's just technique yeah positional strangulation against the French defense so move 95 <laughs> rook f7 check so very interesting maybe uh, the popularity of of the classical variation might go up because of this game uh, that Alpha Zero chose this variation. It seemed pretty good the way it was played. Formatic with the F5 to leave a pawn weakness on E6. The uh, scenarios where the pawn on C3 was sacrificed to essentially get inroads. And when it was finally really taken, yeah, White had enormous uh, pressure in that end game and created a sort of zigzag scenario with the bad bishop on c8 and an ideal knight on c5. The bishop just locked down by its own pawn chain. So a classic dead end game that French defence players dread. So hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.